Do you have any encouragement for other people who work with special needs people that you want to give? I think the main encouragement is don't look at it as something as a job. Mm. Look at it as something that you're kind of adopting little brother or sister. You are now watching Whole Creations. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Hamilton Odman, and this is my friend Dylan. Hi, how you doing? Hey, Dylan. So, Dylan and I were going to be doing a podcast about um, his job and about him working with people with special needs. I'm really um, inspired by this guy. This guy is a musician as well and works at a church. And I'm really excited to see what comes out of this podcast. So, for all you guys out there that are into music, working with people with special needs, um, or have a faith-based background, or may not have a faith-based background, please stay and and just come and hear this great um, podcast. So with all that being said, Dylan, tell us something funny or hilarious about yourself. Um, So so one thing about me, I have perfect pitch. So, and it's so bad to where I could hear like different frequencies. And in high school, it was so bad that the kids, you know, my fellow like classmates all knew I had perfect pitch. And in our band room, there was this VCR that made a really high frequency if you turned it on. I can remember it to this day, it's a B flat. And it would just run. And the running gag was, how long is it gonna take for Dylan to notice and go turn it off? And the record was actually 11 seconds, which is just enough time for me to go in and turn off the VCR. <laughs> I wasn't playing around that day. Gotcha. So, yeah, that, I guess that's kind of the funny thing about me is that with my perfect pitch, it, it, it not just picks up like different, if you're flat, I'll call you out, like right. singing wise, but you know, it picks up different frequencies too. It's almost like I have dog ears, which right. you know, I look at it as both a blessing and a curse. That's for sure. Gotcha. Gotcha. But more of a blessing because, well, you know, with the music side of things, it really helps. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Like uh, the thing, I haven't heard the, that those three letters V C R. My gosh, my, <laughs> we're in a new age now, bro. Oh yeah, I'm an old soul. So I I grew up on like VCRs. You know, my grandmother had eight tracks lying around. Stuff like a bunch of different stuff. Oh, I mean, man. I collect vinyl records myself. So that's definitely something I'm really into. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I respect that, man. <laughs> okay. What what gets you out of bed in the morning when it comes to working with people that have special needs? I think the thing that really gets me out of bed in the morning is, you know, so the night before in the night, or, you know, in the morning, I pray over my kids that I work with mm. because I know for a fact that I'm changing, helping them change their life in one way or another mm. because they're way less fortunate than I do, than I am. Hmm. And being as somebody who has grown up through the special education system, I was in RSP classes and all that because I wasn't as social growing up. So in order to kind of help me with my social habits, they put me in RSP classes. So to kind of, you know, realize being in those classes that people, there's people in there like less fortunate than I, than I am. And that there's also people who don't have the support system that I have. And that I had the power to be that support system for them. Right. right. And so kind of just waking up and realizing, okay, Lord, this is what you've called me to do. And I pray that you let me do that to the best of my ability. And I think that's ultimately what gets me up in the morning. It's realizing that I can be a role model, both in the image of Christ and to these kids who might not have that role model. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You know, um, as you're saying that it's, it's a great reminder that you, it's important to, in your private time with God to pray over these kids, to speak over them because you don't know what's going on in their home life. And absolutely. And so, I mean, a lot of the kids that I've worked with, they're either in group homes or foster care. It's really, it's a sad situation. Hmm. And just knowing that, you know, some of these kids don't have mom and dad to go home to or any type of caring family, whether it be brother, sister, aunt, uncle, et cetera, you know, hmm. it really, you know, it's very, in a way, it's very humbling because of the fact you realize that these kids are going through through stuff that you can't imagine you're going to go through. Right, right. And the cool thing is, in due season, you'll see the, the fruit of your Absolutely. prayers. So it's yeah. true. 
Absolutely. I've seen it, you know, I've seen it work magic. The first kid I ever worked with, um, mm-hmm. super tall kid. If this kid was really, you know, if he really could, could try to do it, he could probably knock me out in one punch. Right. I worked with this kid for about four and a half months. And to see the changes that he went through with me was, it was, I, you know, by the time I was finished, you know, I was, you know, near tears, just seeing how far he's come. And it's just a matter of kind of being consistent and just, you know, praying over them. Because even though some of these kids might not know who Jesus is, or, you know, ironically enough, a lot of these parents of these kids who have parents or not in the group home or foster care system, mm-hmm. they're believers as well. So it's really cool to kind of see that, you know, their parents are believers. Mm-hmm. I'm a believer. We're probably both praying over him at the same time at that point. Yeah. So it's just really cool to be a part of that. Amen, brother. Amen. That's, yeah. that's cool. Um, in my own life, I've seen, so I actually don't know if I ever told you this, but I, I was diagnosed with autism at two years old. Wasn't supposed really? to talk. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to talk, read or do anything in my life, uh-huh. but, um, my grandmother would always pray that Jesus would heal me from autism. Um, and so when you're telling me about like your students that you've worked with, I'm thinking back to a um, third, fourth, fifth grade teacher that I was with for three years, um, third, fourth, and fifth. And she was a believer and she taught me how to read when I wasn't supposed to read. Right. And um, I didn't know this until like later on because I've been fortunate to stay in touch with her through the years. Mm -hmm. Um, she, she told me that she, at her Bible study, she would pray for me. They, they would pray for me in my own, in in their own private time. So you're right. Prayer really does do work. It's perfect miracles and absolutely in these people's lives. So, I mean, even if I, I personally, you know, when two or more people are gathered in his name, his presence is there. Um, I know I personally believe the same thing with prayer, you know, when two or more people are praying for you, it's just, you know, he's, his presence is over you. His exactly. presence is watching over you as they're praying for you, even if you don't realize it. Exactly. Exactly. So, man, this is good. I'm, I'm loving this, this yeah. interview so far. Yeah. Um, so what, this is not on the questions, but this is just coming to my mind right now. Okay. What more do you want for your students for their futures what like what is it that you want for them to realize for their futures um i think for me it kind of varies from student to student Hmm. but a general consensus that i want for my students is for them to understand that you know they're not alone in their fight Hmm. that not only is there people in their life that or at least people who like myself who are willing to come into life and help them as much as they can and remind them that you're going to be loved just the way you are, that I'm going to be here to love you and to not judge and to help you just like Jesus did. Yeah. And I'm not trying to say that I compare myself to Jesus because I'm not Jesus. I can't be Jesus, but um, yeah, just ultimately to remind them that there is resources out there, such as people like myself or different programs that most of which are faith-based that mm. can help them you know, if not transition into the weird world, because I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, I mainly work with transition kids as Mm -hmm. well as high school kids. Um, But the transition kids in schools are usually age range, 18 to 22. After 22, they're practically on their own. Right. So my kind of consensus, especially when I work with the transition kids, um, is to let them know that they're not alone in their fight. Mm. Is that... They'll always have a friend in me, even when they're not at that age range anymore, when they age out at 22, that they can always reach out Mm -hmm. to me. That Mm -hmm. if there's moments where they, you know, are feeling overwhelmed or don't know what to do, they can call me and I have no problem walking them through. Right. Just, you know, praying over them. Right. That's amazing. That's amazing, buddy. And my hope for you is that in the future with the transitional students that you work with, that you'll see the fruit of um what god was doing i and i know that'll happen whether it's on this side or the next i i really i have hope that you're going to see that i have expectation that you're going to see that fruit so thank you thank you so do you have any encouragement for other people who work with special needs people that you want to give 
I think the main encouragement is don't look at it as something as a job. Mm. Look at it as something that you're kind of adopting a little brother or sister. Mm. That yes, you're going to have to have them work. You know, you're going to have to put work in yourself in order to get them where they're expected to be, whether it be ex- expectations at a school district level or I've worked at, I currently work at the school district, but I've also worked at the private school and the private school kind of has similar standards that they want to reach with the kids like the school district. So whether it be private school standards or school district standards or group home standards, any of those standards, like, yeah, you're going to have to help them work through that. But there's also going to be a lot of moments of mentoring and, you know, having to kind of take them under your wing Mm -hmm. and developing that, not only that rapport, but that chemistry with that student. Mm -hmm. So the best word of advice I can give for anybody who's trying to enter the field or is already in the field is don't look at it as a job. Look at it as you are literally adopting a brother or sister. I love that. I love that a lot. Um, could you ever see yourself creating music with your students one day? Absolutely. Absolutely. No question about it. Um, funny story about that is that one of the former students um, at, my, at the school I used to work at, um, he actually made memes about my band. And the last week I was there, the kind of running joke was that, so the teacher of that classroom was a real big fan of BTS. Mm -hmm. And he always joked that Super Loser, my band, was better than BTS. And the last week I was there, they, he made a PowerPoint because each week the students made a PowerPoint presentation, just, you know, like, Usually it was on like career research. So like students would research a career they wanted to possibly look into mm-hmm. and give like just like a fact sheet on the, on the career and like four or five PowerPoint slides. Um, but this student kind of went all out and did Super Loser versus BTS. Mm-hmm. And by the end, I was not only was I dying on the floor laughing just to how good it was. And like he did his research and he listened to our songs and all this stuff and he loved them. Um, and, but he... He, he just did a really funny job with it. And it was just like, I was, I was in tears by the end of it, just like laughing so hard. Um, but yeah, he's also expressed interest to me in trying to make music and, you know, whether it be making music with them or even teaching them music, I'm definitely, I'm all ears for that. Music's mm. my life, really. It's good. You know? And I look at music outside of my field of work as my way of making people smile. And my way of, you know, taking off, these are Ray-Bans here, taking off my Ray-Bans, handing them to the listener and saying, hey, look through these. It's not that bad. Yeah. Life's not that bad. Your situation's not that bad. You're loved, you know, a bunch of different messages of positivity, all kind of reflected within the Bible as well. You know, that you're loved, you have to love one another as you love yourself. And, yeah. you know, and yeah, and that Jesus loves you. I, I, so, I love the way that you... um articulate things are very poetic i don't know if you ever heard that before <laughs> thank you but, uh, thank you yeah um, very, very creative minded very creative minded yeah. <laughs> i try to be i try to be. <laughs> all right now i'm going to play a little sample song of what dylan harris has made in the past check it out again and again single edit by dylan harris Surprise that you blew my mind when my heart's out of line. I don't suppose that you feel the same, but I keep playing your games. And I know it's easy to see the things that we could be, but someone in this head of mine is telling me I'm not me. All right, everybody, that's all that we have for Whole Creations today. Hope you guys have a great day. And thank you again, Dylan, for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well, have a great day, everybody. God bless.